Joyce and me, we got married in 1983. And there was, you've variously heard Joyce got sick in 1991. That is the first time she got an attack of cancer, cancer of the colon. Uh, that time, these boys were very young. We only had two children, and we only had those two. The others are foster, and the, the others we are supporting. So unfortunately, as a result of that, we couldn't have any more children. But we thank God for it. I keep on saying that. Sometimes when I say that, you might think that I'm regretting. There's no regret at all, because what God has given you is what you take. So she got sick that time, and um, we were devastated because we were about eight years into marriage, and we were fairly young. Me and Joyce, we only have one year's difference in terms of age. So we got married when we were a very young couple, and uh, I'm told that I was a dashing person and Joyce was a beautiful lady. I think it still holds. I'm not dashing anymore, but Joyce is still beautiful, even as she lies there. So that was the time. Uh, and when I was called to be cancelled, because I took her to Nairobi Hostel. Yeah. Anyhow, she was taken to Nairobi Hostel, and she was uh, uh, being treated. And then I was called to be cancelled. I remember it was an Indian lady. So he put me down. He called other people. And I was wondering, what is this? I was being cancelled. The counsel was that we are going to treat Joyce. We may succeed or may not. That was number one. Number two you are not going to bear any more children. Now, I don't think I listened to the second one. This is the first one that I had. So this counseling, they have to improve how to do their things. I only had the first one, that she might not leave. And I think from there onwards, I shut my mind. Because from there, I came to Kericho, the company had given me a car. When we reached the estate, I took my car and went straight to my mother. And I remember, Mama Damaris, I went and told her, you know, Mom, Jesus is dying. So I even surprised her. I don't think she, uh, she could understand what cancer is. What? So she told me, my son kneeled down. I knelt and we prayed. We prayed and he told me, Joyce will live if God wills. But please, remember, it is God who gives and it is God who takes. She didn't satisfy me. I don't think that is the kind of thing I wanted. But nonetheless, I went back to work and we worked. And by God's grace, she survived. And from that time to date, Joyce survived. Last year, it came back. When it came back, we got seriously scared because this was now the second attack, same place. During that period, they were using two combined technology. It was, well, I don't know whether I should call it technology, but medical approach. It was chemotherapy and radiotherapy. They were both being applied to her. And if you see the pictures that uh, she did those times, she became very thin, the hair went, the, the socket sank, uh, she couldn't fit the clothes anymore, the mouth was drying literally. It, it really, and I saw it coming again this time. Uh, this time the doctors told us, you stand, uh, you know, a very small chance. So it happened last year. She's been going, I've been going with her to India. We go, we come back, we are given some medicine, we come and use, and so on and so forth. And uh, we've been doing a combined in of India, Kenya, India, Kenya, India, Kenya, but the main doctor has been Dr. Gradwell Kiarie and uh, the Dr. Amit, who is in India, is the one who was actually now kind of monitoring this. But we got the alarm when they came and checked and the medicine wasn't working. The growth was still going on. It, it, was, it was getting bigger. So... Um, at that time, uh, I think the president got to hear okay, about it. Jews were very good friends with the president. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Uru. Thank you. I don't know protocol, so if I keep on calling the names in that order, you'll excuse me because I'm not uh, a politician. <laughs> I was telling William that also. Yesterday I was calling him William, then I forgot that his, his excellency. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, we realized the situation was not getting good. So Kiari advised us, he gave us two options. You can go back to India and this, and then we try now what is called um, a surgery, very radical surgery. Uh, when we went to England, the first thing they told us is that uh, let us kind of stabilize that. A lot of things were beginning to fail in our body. Uh, the kidneys were becoming a bit suspect, the stoma, was no longer behaving as it should usually behave in a normal person. 
uh, then other things also, other secondary diseases started coming in. Uh, low blood pressure until she was put in ICU when we were in, U in, uh, in UK and other things. Brian was always with me because we walked this journey along as he has said. When he came, it was an advantage. He had just left work, but when he came here, he got to work immediately of taking care of the mother. So we would alternate. So in UK, the doctors later on, they did what they call a daughter scan. Then they told me, no, 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 this thing, it has spread. And if we do what you want us to do here, she's not going to live any quality life. Go home. Now, as we are gathered here, you can imagine being told to go home and you're in the UK, and you've sought what is probably the best doctors. The hospital is, we are told in UK, it was, is the best. I mean, all references for cancer is done there, the Marsden Cancer Center. So in between here, I talked to William. He called. William would call at very odd hours. Um, <laughs> I've never known what he does at one in the morning, but he did call. <laughs> so when I told William that, he said, no, 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 my brother, you can't do that. There's no way you're going to come to Joyce, uh, bring Joyce home. But prior to that one, his Excellency, the President, had said a team of her friends to bring her home. That was the reality. So then we went to India. So the Indians also started doing their own thing. They, but they gave, they gave us hope. They told us we can actually do something. And we thought it's a bit better because Indians are more proactive. They are not like uh, uh, Wazungus. You know, Wazungus are a bit litigious. They think we can do something. These fellows can take us to court and we are going to, Indians can take a risk, but they also told us we cannot do anything. That is when we knew we had hit the end of the road. And I wish to apologize to you people of Bomet, because I was not able to share those, that kind of information, even in the social media, among the DG, the CS, the COG, the leader, uh, uh, the Bomet leader in parliament, their parliament, the local parliament. I couldn't share that kind of thing. Because you all know Joyce was not a dramatist. Joyce hated drama with a passion. One, she also didn't like sympathy to keep us going. So, um, uh, I'll talk about Joyce's friends, if you allow me. From the time I met Joyce, she had friends. Today I decided to list them. I realized yesterday I missed out some. There was Christine Maingi, luckily she was in church yesterday. There was Nora Ombese. There was Rachel Mrabu. Catherine Agoya. Jane Garari, later, but for a very long time, they've been friends. And lately, Rachel Shebesh, Beatrice Elachi, Lesuda, Cecily Mbarire, Anne Waiguru, and thank you, Anne, you've been a pillar. Ngilu Charity. Now, there were families, James and Mary Kimonye. Kimonye and Mary, I think you all know, she was, uh, we knew them when they were still very young couple. We were with them in UK. Judith Abondo, Amy Williams, I'm American, I'm sure she's gonna arrive here tomorrow. Then there's Professor Wur and Monica, and the family of Herbert and Gondi. Why am, why am I saying this? Look at that galaxy of friends. Joyce did not concentrate on a region. She did not concentrate on a tribe. And yesterday I told you in the church, I think that is the reason why she married me. She wasn't seeing a Kipsigis, a Luo, a lawyer, G. What What, all these things that people put you, yet they have got no control about it. You were just born a Kipsigis, for instance. What did you do about it? You were born a Kikuyu. What did you do about it? So why do you stress others with your tribe? <laughs> Nonetheless, that is how she uh, encapsulated everybody and all of us. And uh, love, I used to call her love. In, my, in her phone, she saved me a sweetheart, SH. She didn't write it in full. She just wrote SH. So if you go the, through the phone, but when she became governor, she changed. I think people were holding her phone a lot. <laughs> so love, rest in peace. 
and we'll try to emulate you in that region. And I think and I believe that I'm also uh, a student in a way. I've not been subjected to culture. Because if I was subjected to culture, I could not have allowed Joyce to be brought to their home again, to be brought here. I could just have invoked some silly clause that helps nobody, that my wife must be taken home, direct. That is not our life. And I believe even in culture, it is done to regulate and help people think and behave. It is not a punishment.